Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel here in Alaire State Park. I'm camping out here for the night and I just bumped into Rita and Rita has this beautiful, uh, I guess it's a shuttle bus. Well, she's going to tell us all about it. She's going to give us a tour of the inside. Hello, Rita. Welcome to New Hi. Jersey Outdoors. Hey, well, welcome. I'd like to uh, show you my shuttle bus. It is a 1999 E450 uh, Super Duty uh, 7.3 diesel engine. Uh, it's very powerful. It is a, um, a shuttle bus that, if you can see, I don't know if you can see, it used to house the Cape Penelope, Cape Penelope Senior Center residents. And the reason that that's significant is because that's why we bought the shuttle bus. It was um, our favorite place to go camping in Delaware, Cape Penelope. And as soon as we saw that, we knew the bus was for us, even though we had already been in the market for a bus. So, if you'd like, I'd like to show you inside. So, this is what we call the living room kitchen area. Um, over here, I have a suburban stove, three burners. It's got... Um, it's an oven and it's got a broiler. I love that. Uh, this is our vent for our propane heater. Uh, the propane tanks are on the back. I'll show you that in a minute. But this is great. It doesn't. I don't means I don't need to haul around a toaster because uh, I can use the broiler. Um, over here, I have my control switches for my lights, uh, kill switches. That, well, the switches for lights, and I have a USB port. Um, outlet here everything in the bus is 12 volt and then I had these neat shelves put in here uh, usually we hold water bottles in here and just to keep the counters cleaned up and everything so um, so I have just these two are my only upper cabinets and as you can see it it holds plenty of room but uh, and these were uh, store-bought or did someone build, no build I had thing? everything in here my friend um, Wagner's Nate Wagner, he, um, he Wagner's woodworking. He is a friend of mine, and he, he, he said, "I love a challenge." And I said, "Well, boy, have I got one for you." So what he did is he uh, helped me. I designed it, and he made it come to life. So we have these cabinets, and he also did this, um, this kitchen counter and the the cabinets. I guess you could say. So we have two drawers. They're pretty big, and they hold a lot of things. It's this is our pantry, and then we have a nice um, area under here. This this is a uh, backflow, so when we're driving, the water from the tank does not come back up, and it doesn't allow any fumes to come up. And this is uh, my Rivati sink. I love it, and the reason I love it is because it's big enough to hold my biggest pan, and um, and we are also able to wash our hair in here and take like sponge baths, baths out of here. This also opens up and this comes out so if we want to take an outdoor shower we have an outdoor shower. That's pretty clever. Thanks. So um, and then let's see over here is our over here is our bench. This is where we uh, sit to eat. We were going to have a table and we actually had a table in here but we found that we didn't need the table so we just sit with the benches and the benches come up to hold our, they hold systems, they hold our mechanics and junk. So it looks like you got a we inverter ha system on I there? have one, in I have an inverter that controls one outlet because I wanted an inverter to um, charge my computer if I needed to bring my computer. But the pump the uh, accumulator tank and the um, the water. Oops. Stuck. So here's our fresh water tank. Fill it up from the outside. It's about 40 gallons. Okay, that's a good size. Yeah. Yes. Um, you have some type of 12 volt demand pump that yes. gives you pressure. Yes. Yeah, we have a, a 12 volt pump, and then attached to that is the accumulator tank because. We found that our water was pulsating, and um, and it turns out we needed an accumulator tank, and it's super easy to uh, to install. So, and the, as you can see, the pump's not real loud. And where does this wastewater go? Okay, I have a five-gallon tank below the bus here, 
and I have another one over there for for uh, for urine I should say well I'll get to that in a minute but um so then what happens is there's I can hook a hose up to it and drain it wherever I need to drain it but this is really just just water with like Dr. Bonner's and and real easy I could I could dump it anywhere and I just take it home and dump it or if there's a a sanitation dump then we can just dump it there so um, what I showed you in the beginning these switches operated our lighting system and each light is controlled by touch and not only that but you can dim them I don't know if it's showing dim and then they also well they get brighter too and these are um, <laughs> these not are marine creating lights heat? oh these, wow they're marine lights 12 volt and so I love this because I can kind of control what I want lights on and but it is very very bright so above the uh, bench here we have the chalkboard and this is a magnetic chalkboard and the reason we do this is because we wanted to make sure we weren't having scraps of paper all over so when we write notes or a shopping list we just put it on here it helps keep the clutter down in the bus but with it being magnetic, we can put our like parking passes and whatever we need to up here. And thank you for taking the trim ring down on the fan because I really wanted to show, uh, explain to us about the roofing system because most people would use like a padded headliner or a particle board, but this is plywood. Yeah, the reason we did that is because if we wanted to add anything later, we wanted to make sure we could kind of screw into it and, and have it be for real. Um, we we have one inch um, I think that's one inch uh, insulation and then um, it's actually yeah this is just one inch up here and then we have the one eighth board and then um, we have these one buys that um, just for looks nothing really <laughs> and just paint this all white and we just paint it all white yep okay so. so back here is our bedroom area and um, well, there's four of us, me and my three daughters, and I wanted to not convert anything. I really didn't want to have stuff that pulled down, converted. That was my, my goal, to not have anything converted. So the only thing that we have that converts is this trundle bed. And it's, I call it a raised trundle bed. All right, so that pulls out at night. Oops, it's, it's stuck on a, um, That's okay. something. But anyway, these are twin size mattresses. Sort of. They are 30 by six feet. Um, I did that so we had room. We, we none of us are over six feet, so we we kind of saved that way. These were um, they're all custom cut Tachka beds, and uh, so this one we rounded the edges so that they didn't um, you know so it didn't block the the, the walkway or made it seem more open. A lot of people put the aisle down the um, middle and we couldn't, we, I just couldn't make it work that way. So yes, yeah, so, so the same person, Nate Wagner, he did the, um, he did all of these bunks and we just stained them and this, this is a ladder but it's actually the support for the, for the bunk. I'll tell you what, they did a, a really nice job on the Oh yeah, the I know, he here. went over the top with it. And then under these beds is there? So under the beds we have, they were, they're purposely on this size because these are just bins from Ikea. So when we, when we head out we just take these to our house in our closets and we just load them up. A lot of times they'll have hangers on them because we can just pull the hangers out and put them on these. I'm, I'm all over the place, I apologize. We just can hang them on those hooks so we kind of have our hanging clothes out and about. But then they just they just slide under here. We also have a tent under there, like a canopy, a twelve, a ten by ten tent. So that always stays there in case we need it somewhere. Okay. Um, now this is um, this is a sentimental piece. Uh, the the woodworking guy Nate he did this for me. I have a box like this from my ancestors in my house, and I absolutely love it. So he he created one same red box. Uh, to, he mimicked it in the bus, but um, it holds everything. It holds our blankets, our nightgowns, socks, the curtains, you name it. It's it's quite a huge space, and it like um, you know we can we can sit down and put our pants on or uh, things like that. It's really it's really helpful. 
Now this under here is just our kind of catch-all. So I have my tools back here. Um, I'll put extra pantry stuff here for on a long trip. And then this is my bag that stores or it's a big basket that stores all the it'll store laundry, backpacks, extra blankets sometimes or, or winter coats when we're going out and about. And all I do is I just I have a hook over there and here and then I just go stick it right there. Like that. And it'll, it holds everything in pretty nicely. Uh, our chairs and beach umbrellas in the back. And this, this door actually, I'm sorry, this door actually opens up so we can access that same thing from the, from the back side. So these two windows, these two doors open up. And we have a... Uh, that's the advantage of getting a shuttle bus. I guess this would have been yeah, some type of handicap. Yeah, uh, this was the handicap door. Um, it, it, yeah, that was a that was a feat in itself to get rid of that. Um, there was a lift or something there. It was a lift. Yeah, it was very, very, very heavy. So an interesting thing is the, to gut the whole bus and to get rid of the um, fiberglass and bolts and everything like that. The seats cost me eighteen dollars. So when I took the um, the lift out. I put it in my truck and I took it to the scrapyard and they gave me $18 for it. So I got the bus down to nothing. Um, they like it all broke even. So there was a um, an escape hatch here. And it, of course it, it leaked like n nobody's business. So we bought a um, marine hatch and it just oh, opens wow. up. Look at that. So balloon festivals, fireworks, you'll find us up here. And it's easy to access, so we just climb up on this bed. And it, it's supposed to, it'll hold open, but. I wish I had that on my van. Oh, this is really nice. This is really, really nice. So um, this was, we weren't sure what we were gonna do with this. I, w I wasn't sure, but it actually ended up to be a nice catch-all for these big things. So these I put in that, um, marine hatch for sunny days so that it doesn't turn into like an oven in here and then I just store my little shelf and you know if I have to crawl under the bus that type of thing um my chair each chair so now talking about sun what do you do I mean there's if you want to look around folks there's windows all the way around so how do you address privacy well <laughs> Because we, we figure we just get dressed in the back here, we have these, during the day, we have this like, um, it looks really terrible now, but it's um, this peel off okay. plastic. Um, so they can't see in. And the way it works out is that when we're over there, you can't see anything through these anyway. It is dark. They are darkened windows. Um, at night, we'll pull curtains out and we just hook them on these little these little magnets and I put strapping all along this edge and there's actually magnetic paint painted under this white sill so my curtains will stick up here and the bottom have magnets in them and then they'll stick to the um, ledge because this this is actually like an inch or two in from this so if they hung they would actually hang out and I was like you know every inch it, it like this you need every inch so I made sure I put them back in. So over here is our thermostat that runs that heat in the front of the bus. Um, so it's like a propane heater? Yep, yeah, it's the propane heater and like I said that's in the back. We have um, we have the propane also runs the hot water heater or just the water heater <laughs> and uh, this is a ventless one it's hard to find it but um, so we have incredible hot water. The reason I did that is because on cold nights we use water bottles, hot water bottles, when it's going to get really really cold and because there's four of us and they're like um, I think two liters it would take forever to boil them on the stove so I'm pretty lazy and so I just decided I would buy one of these and when we're filling up our hot water bottles if you put it on the hottest it, it is extremely hot so we don't have to really boil the water that's it's hot enough to just stick in our beds for the night and we all we stay warm so um, now this is what we call this is our refrigerator oh and by the way this is the best invention ever put magnets on your hairbrush and then with three girls and then 
they never lose it. So um, this is a winter cooler. It's a, I think it's the 62, two sides, and this is 12 volt and, or AC. So if we're at someone's house, we can just run a cord out the window and plug it in that way. Otherwise, it's 12 volt, and it really is pretty efficient um, and holds quite a bit of stuff. So, and each side can be um, their own temperature. So like this could be 50 degrees if I'm holding just fruit or whatever. And then this one can be freezing. It goes anywhere from negative 70, I think, to 50. What kind of, do you have batteries, or solar? What, what runs Yeah, everything? so I did not want to do solar. I, I just, it just never felt right. And like, that's the thing. If, if it doesn't feel right, like there's a reason. So I just don't go for it and I and solar never really felt right to me so what I do is I have two batteries that are dedicated just to starting the bus and running the bus there's another a 200 AGM battery that um, is in the next bank over from those batteries uh, the alternator charges them but I have an isolator so the 200 AGM just runs my house lights uh the the fan that's under repair right now lights fan inverter pump cooler so the isolator basically if i get this right if you leave on all these lights in the back you're right. not draining the engine battery correct but it allows power through from the alternator yeah. to charge your 200 it'll, amp hour yeah. battery it'll okay. charge my first set and then it charges the the house battery and um Oh yeah, because there is nothing uh, to me being stranded with you know not being able to start it because of a dead battery. I, I and there's just no reason to when there's things like isolators out there. So this is kind of a sore subject, but it's a necessary subject. So we chose there's the toilet. We chose um, to use a separate over a composting toilet, and the reason is because we have four girls and. In the morning alone, we would fill up the gallon <laughs> urine uh, container. And I said, I didn't want to be carrying a, a urine bucket around everywhere. So we, uh, we chose the separate and that this, the urine would then go into a tank underneath the bus, a five gallon tank. And that, you know, I can hook a hose up to and, and get rid of it however I need to. And then um, your number two goes in the back. And we, we, we did choose this because, um, well, I have young girls, and I didn't know if they could do one and not the other. And it, we just, I just decided to do this way. So if they're doing it both at once, it goes where it needs to go. And do you add anything to yeah. the bag? Yeah. So right now we're using hemp pet bedding, and that keeps down the smell. And it's just, uh, I, I can actually show you how underneath it. So it's just a you know Home Depot bucket. I have it double bagged. You can buy biodegradable bags, um, but anyway, I I'm not using them right now. So it's just regular bags. I double bag it, and then so the urine goes in here, and there is a that has that same anti that has that same yep. Okay. So no smell, no. Um, I I heard horror stories about when people are driving and like hit bumps, and they have a full tank, and it comes up and. You could do that. You could siphon the water out of a pre pee trap underneath a, a toilet or a sink, and now you have direct vent into the tank. So yeah, that, yep. those are necessary. So that's just um, so that's our really elaborate system there. So and what's um, what's the hole in the side? <laughs> for? Okay. Well, we were having a hard time putting that lit lid back on, and so I see. So it's got to line so, up. Yeah, it has to because we don't want to find out the hard way that it didn't line up. If you have a puddle on the floor. Yeah, I so I can now stick my hand through here to hold this pump or yeah. to hold this pipe to make sure that it indeed. And there's no clamp, it's just gravity it feeds it down. There's no pressure, yeah. so. Okay. Well, that hose was meant to fit, fit that. Okay. So we'll just get this covered up. So normally, um, we are getting water we don't know where from all the time. Usually it's from my home before we set out on a trip, but sometimes we don't know. 
And so we did choose to use the Berkey's water system as opposed to having like RV filters and something that could just be a little screwy. And what we do with this is, we, usually we have it right down here because if you remember the water bottles are here so the kids just come in and fill up there and um, you know they don't have to come mess up that. When we travel it just goes in here and then there's a piece of velcro here that I just struck around here so clever. it's safe and sound. Very clever. I thought so. <laughs> okay. Okay, I do have a backup mirror, I mean uh, cameras, and this is where all of the, like the curtains and, uh, you know, all that big fluffy stuff that hogs up a lot of room. I just have it all smushed in there, hmm. so. Okay. And, and uh, you might have said it earlier, what is the length of this? Um, so outside it's 25 feet. Inside it's 16 feet up to where that where the floor ends. Oh, and the, the flooring is just vinyl stick-on flooring from um, Home Depot, waterproof and so easy to replace. Swap out if you need to. Yeah, okay. yeah, yep. Yeah. So here are where our batteries are. The the bus batteries are in here, and the the, the Monster 200 AGM battery is right in there. Wow. Yeah, it's um. It, it's heavy, so we don't want to mess with that if we don't have to. So, right up here, I don't know, should I shift them? So, when I went to go buy my backup cameras, um, I went to buy the one pack and they were sold out. So, I had to buy the two pack for like, I don't know, maybe eight or $18 more. So, I bought it. And then I noticed I had this, I think they must have had a light here at one time. So, I just decided to have the camera mounted there. Now the cameras are um, 175 degrees, I believe, and they also have like night vision. So I did this because if I heard somebody lurking outside, it actually shines all the way to the front of the door. So it's, it's a safety thing. So the other camera is mounted on the back here. And this is really nice because we store our bikes back here. I store my grill and whatever else we have. And I can, if I hit a big bump, I just, naturally look up and make sure it's all still there and it's I, really uh, nice. I do the same I make sure my bike is still on my bike rack <laughs> and this tray probably wasn't part of the shuttle it wasn't um, so I had somebody build this and help me out with a lot of the the parts on the inside um, so he um, it's road roots upfitters and they're from Colorado they came out and him and his wife and his son, he, he helped me out. Uh, JT, um, JT Lane, I should give him some credit because he did this. So he actually tore the old bumper off or whatever, I don't know. And he, he designed all of this himself. And he, he just, you know, attached it. and ha It's all attached to the frame. Hmm. And uh, it's a lifesaver. So when I'm grilling, I just, uh, I, I don't have to put it on a table. Oh, I didn't even see it because the tanks are black. Those are two 20-pound uh, bottles. Yeah. You got about five gallons each bottle. Yeah, so I have, I have this one is just always hooked up to my, my grill and uh, very easy to use. And then this is actually, I've used this as an outdoor table more times than I can, can say. So, you know, I got a lot of flack about painting these black, but um, the white ones actually just did not fit and I haven't really had any trouble. Like, they haven't blown up or anything. <laughs> so. And is there any uh, systems on this side? Just besides, uh, uh, looks like you got a docking light and uh, diesel fuel fill. Well, those those were already part of the bus. The only thing I added on this side was the. Um, the this was is for the fresh water. Okay. The fill, and then underneath up here, there's um, there's a hook for a. The uh, the tank. Okay, that's to drain down. To drain to drain out the, the, the urine. urine yeah. tank. 
Well, I've they heard... call it a gray and black tank, so I guess this one's a yellow tank, <laughs> it's, right? It's a yellow tank, yeah. And okay. I, I often dump a lot of water in it to make sure it's not straight urine. And it looks like this outlet might be for a block heater for the engine. Yep, yep. So okay. in the winter time, we just put that on. But I haven't had it. I did buy it in the winter, but I haven't owned it over the winter, like to keep track of it. So the uh, there's been nothing done to the outside that uh, we kind of spent all of our funds on the inside, and we're gonna save and decide how we're gonna paint the outside. We can't decide if we want to be um, like. We don't know if we want to be stealth or if we want to stand out yet. This is pretty stealth. If I was driving, I would say, down Atlantic City, and I seen this parked on the side of the road, I would have just yeah, thought it yeah. was a shuttle oh, yeah. bus. Yeah, I was thinking about putting, like, you know, the Gardner Choir, there Episcopal you go. Church or something, you know? So. Anything up in the cab area? How many, how many miles are on this coach? Uh, it has 137,000 miles. And that everybody knows for a 7.3 liter diesel power strip. Oh yeah, I've got, it's like, yeah, a third of its life. Um, honestly, it's the, it's, it was very easy to drive this. Um, you got a power seat too. I know, right? <laughs> but it, it, it was a pretty gross seat and I haven't replaced that yet. So it's pretty comfortable. A lot of, um, very easy to see. The only, my biggest, my favorite button is one that closes this. <laughs> I, could, I could just do that. I'm used to the lever that the bus driver. I, yeah, uses and um, it doesn't. And it actually has a key on the outside, so when we leave, we can leave out there and, and just lock it, and it closes it and opens it. Now, don't ask me what any of these things are because I'm pretty sure they're they're useless. They're unrelated to what you're unrelated using for now. Unrelated to everything. But the cigarette lighter works, which holds my, which charges my phone, which is the most important thing. So. So while I'm driving, the kids are buckled in. Um, there's three seat belts here. We we are planning on putting cushions down, but I just haven't decide, decided how or what style or anything. So um, so what um what inspired you to take a risk like this and and buy a bus and convert it? What was your ideas here? Well, way back when. I knew with the four of us and as a single mom that it would be very expensive to fly anywhere. So camping was our was what we were going to do. I wanted to travel, but the only way I could travel was to camp. And so we had a camper. We had a 17-foot Rockwood Rue, a hybrid. And that started to, to not do so well. So when I went to look for RVs, I... Not only did I need an RV, I also needed a truck. And you know, doing the math, I said, "Oh my goodness, I'm going to be spending anywhere between fifty and eighty thousand dollars." And and I always, I'm a very, I'm a tiny house enthusiast, and so I think I just tried to get the best best of three worlds. You know, tiny house, I needed a truck and a place to camp. A, a, you know, a camper. So this just was just what's going to work. Um, I chose the shuttle bus because of the height and and kind of because it's the one that popped out in front of me first and when it said Cave Henelopen on the side that's what I was going to do. That sealed the deal. So I see a lot of schoolies converted. Mm -hmm. I don't see shuttle buses and I, let me tell you after I've seen what you've done here on this shuttle bus <laughs> I'm sure some of our viewers are going to start taking a detour and stop maybe look for a shuttle bus oh, too. Yeah yeah um the thing with shuttle buses is they're very inex they, they're just as inexpensive as buying um, a school bus. I, mine was actually I think overpriced. I spent forty five hundred on it, um, and I just put a lot of money make to my friend Mike, the me a mechanic, and I just said please make sure everything's good. And it was in really pretty decent shape, and um, I think I probably spent another fifteen thousand, not even on the whole interior. That's very reasonable. Yeah, because the camper I was looking at was over twenty thousand. Plus the truck. Plus the truck. So now I don't have to buy a truck. And what other tips would you give our viewers here uh, before we wrap up? Uh, if they were going to attempt to build something like this, what are some of the uh, downfalls that you've seen, or some of the hurdles that you had to go over and challenges uh, would, to get to this level? Yeah. So I was 
I felt like I'm old, so I was in a hurry to get started on the summer, so I hired somebody, and it seems like a lot of money, and, and it was a lot of money, but I'll tell you what, it was worth every penny. I had, you know, Robe Roots Upfitters out from Colorado, JT Lane and his wife uh, came in and spent four weeks with me and, and just rehabbed the whole thing, and so was Mike, who was from Navigation Nowhere. He, they had their buses parked in my driveway, and just worked on this day and night for four weeks. So our viewers are going to be very familiar with uh, Mike because he was on, he was featured on our channel. It was actually one of the first, yeah. one of the first RV interviews I did and uh, I just met with him about last week. We're going to do a follow-up video with oh, Mike. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So you'll have to say, do you know Rita? Because he's like, everybody knows Rita. <laughs> but um, I had them here and it was worth every penny. Uh, you know, I, it was my design. I put a lot of blood, sweat and tears in it alongside of them. But I didn't have to make the mistakes um, that they had already seen and went through. And it, it was like, it was really pretty smooth to do. But it, it just saved a ton of headache and it, they were worth every penny. Um, the other thing too is I'd say make sure you know what kind of camping you're going to be doing. Are you going to campgrounds? Are you going to be stealth camping? Are you traveling in it for long and, and that kind of thing? Because that really determines your systems like whether you're going to have hookups or whether you're going to use a dump drain or um, and that kind of stuff. I knew I wanted to be able to stop at places and be self-sufficient which is why I chose the 12 volt battery and the systems that I did on the inside. And uh, a lot of our viewers, after watching Navigation Nowhere video that we did, uh, had a lot of questions in regards to CDL. How do you insure? How do you license one of these? Is, is there anything that we need to know about that? Well, a lot of people won't know what to do, but I, I called my insurance company, and because of my weight, because I was over, let's say I was over 8 ton. Um, no, I was over 8,000 pounds. I think I, because of my weight, I had to... Uh, get commercial insurance. DMV registered me as a van, a really heavy van, but a van. And um, right now, because I have a sink and a toilet, I can actually send paperwork into um, Trenton to get it converted to an RV, and then I can get RV insurance. And that would probably cover the conversion, because you're probably right now not covering yeah. the full uh, amount. I'm not really entirely sure what I'm covered with, but I know I I just, I have as much as I can get. You have um, at least, you have liability. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, and, and I actually have collision, comprehensive, I have everything on it. Um, and then, uh, as far as the CDL, you don't need a special license because I'm not transporting, I'm, I'm not, it's not for hire or, you know, it's not being used as a commercial. I'm not hauling people around and making money off of it. Well, Rita, thank you very much for spending the time with us here at New Jersey Outdoor oh. Adventures YouTube and our viewers. They're going to love this video. They're going to love you. They're going to love the conversion. Um, and, and thank you for being our guest here today. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it, and we'll see you soon.